All right, so here I have a numerical example where I'm going to find the fair allocation uh, with the method that I just described to you graphically. So here's the numerical example. So let's suppose the agent's utility functions are uh, Cobb Douglas, x times y, and the initial endowment for agent A is two good x, one good y, and agent B, two good x, three good y. So therefore, the total number of good x, let's represent it as wx, is four, and then the total number of good y is also four. All right, so their total uh, number of four good x and good y. All right, well, uh, first thing first, we are going to make the hypothetical uh, uh, endowment point as the half of this. All right, so wx half, wy half, which basically means two good x, two good y. All right, so let's suppose, so this is the initial endowment point in some sense. Um, and then we are saying, oh, let's make this as the initial endowment point. Well, how can you do that? Well, by transferring the initial endowments between the agents. You take uh, basically, so you don't do anything about good X. You basically take some of good Y from agent B and I mean some one, one unit of good Y from agent B and give it to agent A. And then say, okay, here is your initial endowment and then now do trade because if this is the initial endowment and they, if they trade, all right, they're gonna end up somewhere here, all right? There's gonna be some price ratio where they're gonna end up somewhere here. That's gonna be pretty efficient. That may be fair, we don't know, but this approach is gonna give us fair allocation for sure, all right? So this may not give us a fair allocation because at the end, this is gonna give us pretty efficient allocation but this allocation may not satisfy equity. Or so somebody may envy the other. I mean, if you remember, by the way, along the contract curve, uh, there are lots of allocations which are not fair. For example, this allocation where agent A gets nothing and agent B gets everything is pretty efficient, yes, but it's, it doesn't satisfy equity. Agent A will envy agent B because agent A gets nothing, agent B gets everything. So clearly agent A is gonna say, oh, I wish I had what you have. All right, so therefore this point is not uh, fair. Symmetrically, this point is also not fair. All right, so the fair allocation is somewhat, I mean, this, I, I don't want to make a generalization, so I, but, I, but nevertheless, with the same idea, probably allocations closer to the zero point are not going to be fair with the similar reasoning. So the fair allocations are more towards the middle point of the contract curve. Again, it's like there's, I mean, I, I'm not trying to generalize things, but uh, sort of trying to give you a, a sense of where the fair allocations could be located. All right, anyway, so let's make this the um, uh, 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 starting point. Then let's find this point. So how do we find that? Well, simple, uh, the utility maximization problem. So this is the point where the marginal rate of substitution of agent A equals to marginal rate of substitution of agent B, which is equal to the price ratio minus Px over Py. Remember, so the marginal rate of substitution of agent A, because the utility functions are the same, it's the derivative with respect to uh, good x first. So this is ya divided by xa. So this is the marginal rate of substitution of agent A. And marginal rate of substitution of agent B, oops, is this, is equals to price ratio. All right, as you see, the minuses will cancel out. So what I can write, therefore, is that in general equilibrium, uh, xAPx is gonna be equal to yAPy, and similarly, xBpx will gonna be equal to yBpy, all right? So I'm gonna use those uh, in, 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 in the budget constraint. So what is the budget constraint? Maybe I should open up some space here. All right, so what is the budget constraint? Well, for agent A, uh, xA, px plus 
YAPY, this is the expenditure, equals to income. So the income for both agents is going to be the same. It's two good X, two good Y. All right? So that's the income. So what I know is that the XAPX equals to YAPY. So whenever I see YAPY, I can replace this with XAPX. So I'm going to have 2XAPX equals 2 times PX plus PY. So the twos will cancel out. Hence, XA equals PX plus PY divided by uh, uh, PX. Right? And once I know that, remember I can find the PY because this times PX, which is going to be PX plus PY, is going to be equal to YAPY. So therefore YA equals PX plus PY divided by PY. All right? By the way, if you do the same thing for agent B, the nice thing about it is that the agents have the same uh, utility functions and the agents have the same initial endowments. So XB will be PX plus PY divided by PX. And then YB is going to be PX plus PY divided by PY. All right. So that means if these guys make a trade starting from the equal endowments, they're going to end up having the same number of good X and the same number of good Y. As you see, the PX, PY, I mean, the prices are the same uh, for the consumers. So both agents will have the same uh, number of good X and the same number of good Y. All right. So that means by definition, the, this allocation is going to satisfy uh, equity because both agents will consume the same thing, all right? So it is also going to be Pareto efficient by the first, well, uh, first theorem of welfare economics. If you remember, the general equilibrium allocation is always Pareto efficient, and hence this allocation is uh, uh, fair, all right? But nevertheless, let's calculate those x's and y's and double check that these are actually Pareto efficient and um, uh, 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 fair. All right, so how do we do that? I mean, how do we find the values of X and Y? Well, simple. Um, we, we have to use the um, market clearing conditions. Remember the supply of, I'm sorry, demand for good X. The total demand of good X has to be equal to total demand of uh, good X, which is equal to 4. And symmetrically, the demand for good Y has to be equal to demand for good uh, supply for good Y. But clearing one market is enough to find the price ratio. So XA is this, PX plus PY divided by PX. XB is also the same thing. So two of these has to be equal to 4. So PX plus PY divided by PX is equal to 2. So PX plus PY equals, do the cross product, 2PX. Send this PX to the other side, PY equals PX. Hence, P, well, P, PX over PY ratio, the price ratio that we were looking for is basically 1. All right, so that's the price ratio. So that means... Agent A's, uh, so think of this PX is 1, PY is 1, all right? So PX is 1, PY is 1, or PX is 2, PY is 2. All As long as the PX, PY ratio is 1, all those prices, or PX equals 2, PY equals 2, all those prices are equilibrium. So whether you plug 2, 2 here, or 1, 1 here, doesn't matter you're going to get exactly the same X and same Y, all right? I mean, you can check. So here, if I plug 1 and 1, so it's going to be 2 divided by 1, so it's 2, and then XB also equal to 2, and then YA equals uh, 2, and then YB equals 2. Well, that basically means uh, the initial endowment, once I... <clears throat> So this is the initial endowment, all right, remember, and then I split them equally. So this is the 
a new hypothetical initial endowment, but apparently this point is on the contract curve. All right. Um, so clearly this is uh, this satisfies equity. I mean, uh, no envy because nobody will envy the other because you know both agents are consuming same amount of good X and same amount of good Y. But the more importantly is like, how do I know that this is pretty efficient? Well, you can just verify that um, this allocation is on the contract curve. Well, how do I know that? If you remember, the contract curve is the point where MRS A equals MRS B, which basically means uh, Y A divided by X A equals to Y B divided by X B. So what is Y A divided by X A? It's one. What is Y B divided by X B? It's one. So one is equal to one. That means this allocation is on the contract curve. And hence, this allocation is Pareto efficient because the allocation gives the same uh, good X and good Y to both agents. It, is, uh, it satisfies equity, and hence this allocation is fair. But the thing is, uh, we can have tons of other fair allocations. So I'm done. I already calculated one fair allocation, which is two good X, two good Y. But there could be some bunch of others. There could be, uh, I, I don't know. Um, how do I find all uh, fair allocations? All fair allocations. Well, first of all, find all Pareto efficient allocations. Well, what is all Pareto efficient allocations? Well, we call it contract curve. Remember, it's YA divided by XA. I mean, the margin rate of substitution of agent A equals to margin rate of substitution of agent B. All right. Okay. Well, because I have four variables here, four unknowns, we usually reduce it down to two by using the feasibility constraints. Remember the feasibility constraints? Agent A's and agent B's demand for good X has to be equal to the total endowment, which is four. And agent A and agent B's demand for good Y has to be equal to total number of good Y, which is also four. So what I can do, whenever I see XB, I can just write four minus XA. And whenever I see YB, I can write four minus YA. All right, so therefore, the contract curve is gonna be equal to YB, which is four minus YA, divided by, uh, this is XB, I'm sorry xb which is 4 minus xa so do the cross product so 4ya minus xaya equals to 4xa minus uh, xa times ya so this minus xayas will cancel out the fours cancel out so xa equals ya is basically the pareto efficient uh, uh, the set of all pareto efficient allocation so my edge word box is a square four by four because that's how many good X and good Y I have. So in a four by four uh, square, this doesn't look like a square, but well, that's fine. Um, this is Y A equals X A, the 45 degree line, I mean, is the set of Pareto efficient allocations. Well, so the fair allocations, therefore, should satisfy um, <clears throat> X A Y A, so X B Y B. This is fair allocations, but the fair allocations should satisfy. They are the same, so let's call this X. So this is X X, and then four minus of this, four minus X, four minus X. This is what a fair allocation should look like. All right. So once again, so X A Y A has to be the same. I'm just going to call them X, and then. Uh, XB is 4 minus XA, I mean 4 minus X. YB is also 4 minus YA, which is X. So 4 minus X, 4 minus X. And X can be any number between 0 and 4, all right? Because the total number of X is uh, at most 4. All right. Um, so this is the set of all Pareto efficient allocations. Well, the fair allocations are those where the agent's utility, remember utility of A, 
when she consumes uh, 4 minus x unit of good x and 4 minus... Oh, maybe it's my bad that I use this notation as x. Maybe I should have used it alpha. I don't know. I, I hope I didn't confuse you. I, I don't mean... So x is just another uh, parameter, all right? So it has nothing to do with x, it, good x itself. So it's, it's my bad. I'm sorry. So let's call it alpha. So therefore, these are alpha, alpha, all right? So alpha, alpha, 4 minus alpha, 4 minus alpha, where alpha is some number between 0, 4. So um, the agent A is going to prefer, uh, I mean, she's going to say, oh, what I consume is no worse than uh, what you consume, which is 4 minus alpha, 4 minus alpha. All right. So what is the utility of agent A? And, and by the way, utility of agent B is going to be, uh, you know, what she consumes for minus alpha is greater than or equal to what the other agent consumes. All right. So these two conditions must hold so that we can say, oh, the allocation satisfies equity. I mean, uh, nobody envies uh, uh, the other agent. All right. Well, what does these two conditions mean is, well, because the utility functions are called Douglas x times y, so it means alpha square is greater than or equal to 4 minus alpha times 4 minus alpha. So it's 4 minus alpha square. And then from the agent B's uh, uh, you know, th this inequality from for agent B, we must have 4 minus alpha times 4 minus alpha, which is 4 minus alpha square, has to be greater than or equal to alpha times alpha, which means alpha square. So these two conditions must hold. So, first of all, I have a something e greater than or equal to something else. That something else should also be greater than or equal to that something. It means they are... All right, so these two things means alpha square has to be equal to 4 minus alpha square. All right, so take the square root of both sides. Alpha equals 4 minus alpha, and then therefore alpha equals 2. What does that mean? That means the, the only fair allocation in this example is where agent A consumes two good X, two good Y, alpha, alpha, and then agent B consumes four minus alpha, which is again two. All right, so the allocation that we found is the only fair allocation. So in this example, there aren't infinitely many. There's only one fair allocation, which is uh, splitting the endowments equally. All right, but if we change. <clears throat> if we had different endowments, um, well, we would have a different result. If we had a different utility functions, we would have a different uh, a result, obviously. So it doesn't mean that fair allocation is always unique. In this example, it is. All right. I hope that was clear.